In today's video, I'll be getting my Dremel out. it's not a euphemism. Today I am going to be resolving some rust issues on my Smart for 2 with my new Dremel that arrived just a few days ago. In an earlier YouTube short I pointed out a rust area on this Smart which is actually just under here. The back end of the sill on the inside. Crawling about underneath the car is probably a little bit easier to see and I do wonder if this corrosion particular this piece here that started as a result of this rubbing up and down on here effectively rubbing off the paint and exposing bare metal now it's quite scabby I don't think it's gone through I'm gonna poke about at this and then attack it with my Dremel get this back to nice clean metal and then paint this so here it is Dremel 3000 We've got the main unit itself of the actual Dremel, which lives in this little cradle that I think can be mounted on the wall. It's quite a nice thing. It comes with a whole bunch of attachments here, bits if you like. various different little sanding pieces. I bought a cheap version of one of these a little while ago and it lasted five minutes, it was ridiculous. In fact, while I was using it, one of these little pieces of sandpaper here came adrift with a centrifugal force and came up and slapped me in the face. I was not impressed. Um, it, it wasn't good. Uh, I, it broke, it failed. In fact, the other thing that failed on the cheap one was this button here that you use to lock this into position. Well, that button just fell out within a few minutes of using it. So I, this time I thought I'll go for the real thing. I know they're more money, but I've always wanted a Dremel and uh, cheaper alternatives very rarely work. I always say if you buy cheap, you buy twice and uh, I stand by that. This also comes with this little attachment piece. So the idea is this attaches here and then you can get on with finer work with this little piece here. I think I'm going to be using this for the job today. Right, let's get this little beast off the ground. So to begin with, I'm going to move this out the way to enable me to access the area. It's relatively easy to do because it just latches under there. This is an extension of the inner wheel arch liner. This nicely exposes this area now so I can start setting to it and preparing it. When working under a car and using a Dremel or a grinder, anything like that, always wear eye protection, however hideous it might make you look. When I was a main dealer technician, I spent so much time in the minor injuries unit with bits in my eye that I almost got to know them on first name terms. I'm keen to avoid that. Initially I'm going to scrape off any loose or flaking paint. After scraping off the initial flaky paint, I've established that this has not corroded right the way through. I have however found a bit more corrosion up here and for this reason I want this to be right out of the way so I'm going to remove at least this back section of this wheel arch liner for better accessibility. For ease of access I've removed this wheel which gives better access to these clips. this 10 millimeter nut. There's another nut further up and with these nuts removed we can get the lower part of this right out of the way which gives us far better access. And this is the extra piece of corrosion here that I want to tackle with the Dremel. 
I have set up the Dremel with this extension because I think this is easier for finer work and for getting into where I need to get into. I've also attached this little grinding wheel to start with just to get rid of the worst of the corrosion and paint. It doesn't take long until bright metal starts to appear. It really is just a case of carrying on with this process till we get rid of all this surface rust. The Dremel kicks up a lot of dust and that's not terribly good for my GoPro. It's certainly uh, getting better but it is a bit of a slow process. Lots of the rust has been removed but more work to do. It's official. The Dremel is dead. That lasted about five minutes and it's, it's dead. I just looked up to see if they have any form of overheat protection not that it should have overheated in that very short time and it seems that they don't not in any kind of resettable um, time-based fashion anyway uh, so I don't know um, that will be going back that's for sure absolutely nothing what a useless thing I hope I didn't overwork it I don't think I did I was only lightly grinding with it not sure what else it's for if it can't handle that. And just like that, we're back to the 80s. Good old fashioned sandpaper. It's harder work, but it's doing the trick. That is all sanded down to good metal and we've got clear margins in the sense that I've reached good metal at the outside of the rust area. Now there are some little pits and indentations where there might still be some active rust so I'm now going to apply a rust killer and that will hopefully kill off any tiny little residual particles of rust, stop it in its tracks before I can then start protecting this against corrosion with the paint finish that I've bought. So I'm just applying some alien blood also known as hammerite rust remover gel but i prefer to call it alien blood look at it and with the alien blood copiously applied it's time to now leave that to do its thing and kill off any residual rust with the rust remover cleaned off this is now ready to be uh, painted i know it's under the car but i still do like to mask things because i don't want everything covered in the zinc paint so I will still make an attempt to mask this area and prevent paint from getting all over things. Everything in the area is masked up to ensure that only the area I intend to get painted gets painted. The product I'm going to use is from a company called ProClean, not a company I specifically know anything about, it just looked like a good price and a good compromise on the basis that it's an all-in-one zinc primer and a top coat. I was quite attracted to the fact that I haven't got to use different products. Now I'm no expert, but from what I understand, zinc galvanizing is usually done hot. Zinc metals are dipped into hot zinc. So I'm under no illusion that spraying this uh, on uh, isn't gonna render the panel a galvanized panel, but I'd like to think the zinc being the sacrificial element will take the hit before the steel in terms of further corrosion. That's the theory anyway. Okay, the first coat's on. Ah, it's a very on-off trigger on the aerosol, button on the aerosol. It's uh, very difficult to just uh, apply it evenly, actually, which is quite unusual. But uh, first coat, it comes out really thick. It's re really, uh, it must be very rich in zinc. There's a lot, an awful lot comes out with each squirt. So uh, normally I like to do a fine mist for the first application and then uh, build it up, but it's, there was no chance of that. That's three good coats now, leaving plenty of time between coats as well. Goes on really thick. I think that's gonna protect it well. Right, the fourth and final coat's been done off camera and it is all looking very well protected under there with the zinc. Now, at this point, I've got two options really. Now, I could cover it in something like this, which is an underbody sealant with wax oil, and some people would or I could cover it with some sort of cavity wax. 
to protect it further. Now some people like using things like this and they'll happily spray this all over the repair once it's dry and then forget about the whole thing. And that's one way of doing it. Personally, I'd rather see what's going on and once you cover it with this thick gloopy black underseal you have no idea what's going on under there unless you scrape it all off. So I'm going to leave it with the zinc primer, also top coat, and that way when I do inspect the underside of this car, if that rust is to return and it does bubble up again, I'll know straight away and then I can deal with it again. I'd rather know than just to cover it in black tar-like substances and uh, forget all about it. But we're all different. It's time to remove the masking. So for the finished result, the masking tape is all off and it made a very effective job of preventing this from going anywhere else. As you will see, it is now corrosion free, protected with the zinc paint. It's actually not a bad colour match for the car as it happens. And I'm certainly happier that I used that rather than just spraying it with some generic black gunge. Which I could have done from the start and some people would have done. Uh, and that does still remain an option as I just said you could put under seal over that but I'd rather see what's going on in the future. I'm very happy with that repair. I'm going to let things dry off properly before I actually put the wheel arch liner back. So I'm going to end this video here. Well I hope you enjoyed the video. Slight setback with the failure of the Dremel after a few minutes. Won't be buying another one of those again. But we got round it. If you do have rust in this area of your smart, do not worry, it is easy to resolve. The sooner you get it sorted, the better before it actually goes right through the metal. It didn't in the case of mine, and as you can see, uh, I've made it good again, and that should be great for many years to come. I am absolutely covered in grit and bits of car, so I need to get in the shower, and I think I've earned myself at least one beer. Thank you very much for watching. Do feel free to like and subscribe for more content like this and I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon.